You're watching the Motortopia YouTube channel. My name's Josh with Yeah Buddy Garage, and today I'm gonna install some helper bags on the Dooley Pace truck. Here's what we got from Airlift Company. Now they provided us with their Slam Air kit and with their wireless air tank system. Now these are two separate kits, so you could just purchase the Slam Air kit, install the brackets and hoses, and fill up the bags with an external air source. But if you want onboard air, their wireless air tank system is the way to go. It comes with their air compressor, their valve body, their tank, all the wiring and fasteners that you need. It comes with an air hose, which could come in really handy on the road, as well as a remote control to control everything. But they also have an app on your phone, so you can control the airbags from your phone. The first thing we gotta do is remove these four side bolts from the C-notch. The really nice thing about this kit is that upper bracket will bolt right in place with this Belltech C-notch. All right, so let's see if this fits here. The fasteners provided are just a little shorter. The grade eight fasteners right here are what came with the original Belltech kit. And uh, the grade five, the carriage bolt, is what comes with this kit. The nut's not fully seated. It's not gonna fully seat when the lock washer's depressed. So I think what I'm gonna do is just use the original hardware from the Belltech kit. I think I'm gonna feel better doing that. All right, we're gonna see this together for the first time. Let's see what this looks like. Well, would you look at that? We got these all tight, so this is as tight as it's gonna be. I'm thinking we could scoot the bracket, scoot these holes back, elongate these holes, maybe drill new holes, try to get this bag as close to the frame as we can, and then trim the excess here and hopefully, hopefully have enough clearance where we don't have inter interference with this tire. All right, so I, uh, I put the truck down on ride height, right? So I'm still on a jack stand to keep the, the wheel up, but check this out. So now, oh my goodness, it's a little tighter. We're, uh, we're cleared. So I'm almost wondering if I just cut this off, right? Let me put that bag on. So if we look right here, I jacked the truck up to just about where it's going to hit the wheel. And I'm going to, I'm going to trim it off right here. Then I'm going to go ahead and uh, elongate these holes inboard so that the bag will sit back just a little bit. And I got new carriage bolts for the bracketry so that this uh, hex head bolt won't really chew into the bag. And if the bag touches the bracket, it'll be against a smooth uh, carriage head bolt. So anyway, I'm gonna go chop this up right now. That's just kind of the risk you take whenever you modify a truck like this. I'm not saying that it's like heavily modified and it's full custom, but at the end of the day, the truck is way lower than uh, Chevy ever intended it to be. And the kit that I got from Airlift isn't intended for a drop this low and it's not for these types of wheels so airlift is a really great company so far i've been really impressed with all of their parts and i kind of expected to do this when i got this kit i'm not recommending that you do this i'm not a professional i'm just doing this to see if i could make this kit work on this truck i ended up taking off this quarter inch of this lip and i elongated the holes inboard so now the bag will sit a little closer to the frame. Now this is the grommet that's gonna sit on top of the bag like this. Uh, on the underside of this bracket here, uh, there's a weld on the underside. So I clearance this a little bit, flatten that part of it out. So now that'll sit up there nice and flush. I have not elongated these holes yet, but now it sits just outside of the metal bracket. That is so great to see. I got my wheel fully seated on the hub. I got my carriage bolts installed and everything seems to clear. I would not have been able to jack the truck up. Keep in mind when we're traveling, this bracket is gonna be sitting down here. So if we have side to side movement, it probably won't be an issue. I just really wanted to make sure the bracket cleared the tire in case we had to lift the truck up. 
is kind of getting everything set in place. But one thing I don't like is the position of the bag now. So it's kicked back just a little bit because I have a four degree wedge for the rear end. Now, again, this is this kit's not made for a drop like this. So normally that wedge wouldn't be there and this lower bracket would slide forward a little bit. So to remedy that, I'm just gonna elongate these holes forward just a smidge. Freaking Florida. It sucks not having a shop. Bring you on over here. Let's turn this fan off. Got the uh, other bracket cut up, holes elongated. I got these holes elongated forward. So these are all ready to go. Probably gonna have to call it a night. It's a little late in the day. This rain doesn't seem like it's gonna let up. So catch up with you guys in a little bit. It's the next day and it's 300 degrees outside, but turning this fan off for you guys so you can have some nice audio. I went ahead and put on the air fitting there. Might regret that decision, but I think we can. Oh yeah, dude, we can make that work, no problem. I didn't think that was gonna be so far away. Next, we'll throw on this U-bolt. That'll clamp down on the front of the bracket. Now we can install our U-bolt bracket. So this is the final setup. Let's see if we can look in here. It's really close to that inner bracket. It's not touching. So I'm assuming when it compresses, it may rub right here. We'll see once we get it out, start road testing it and stuff. I mean, it is close, but you know, this is kind of the risk you take when you modify a vehicle and you're using parts that uh, weren't intended for this use. Because keep in mind, this, is for, this kit is for a six inch drop. I'm at eight and I have these custom cut Alcoas to fit in this wheel well, and those wheels take up a lot of space. So should work, we'll see. I'm gonna do the other side and we can keep moving forward. Got the passenger side all buttoned up. Looks like we're ready to move on to the next step. Now, if you did not order the onboard air, and this is the only kit that you're installing, once those brackets are on, you just run your air lines, and let me show you the air hose. You find a mounting point for these guys, and you're pretty much done. I've seen people mount them on the rear bumpers, or I've even seen them mount them in the fuel fill door. Like you could put them up here or something, just kind of out of the way. Then you'd fill the bags with an external air source and check the PSI with a tire pressure gauge. You could even fill those things up with like a bike pump. <laughs> now the bags are on, I gotta find a spot for all of the components for the wireless air tank system. So here they have an example of the way they want it to look. So the front of the vehicle's here, then you have your easy mount assembly, air tank, and compressor. Airlift really wants you to mount these components at least six inches away from a heat source. So the exhaust on this truck, unfortunately, is run really close to the passenger side frame rail, which is where I was gonna mount all these components. So I could either go on the outside of the frame rail, but I think I have a better solution. I think I'm gonna utilize this trailer hitch to mount all of these components. It's gonna be easily accessible. I'm gonna be able to get under here and check everything if I need to. It's gonna be out of the way, away from heat sources. So I think this is gonna be the best solution. But that presents another issue. The harness provided is not gonna be long enough to get to the battery. I got a crew cab long bed truck here. So I'm gonna run a six gauge wire from the battery and mount a bus bar somewhere in the back so I can tie in all the electrical components to that bus bar and not have to worry about running the harness all the way to the front of the truck. Went ahead and installed my uh, pressure relief valve drain and then a uh, 90 degree fitting right here this will go to the the airline but i want to install this tank on this rear bar for the uh, hitch this is a three inch square tubing so i just got these u-bolts and i'll see if i can finagle this in place okay That's not going anywhere. So I'm thinking we could throw the compressor right here. 
Got the holes drilled, but I'm not really sure how I'm gonna do all this by myself. Hope the holes line up too. Here's that snorkel kit. This is the filter that goes on front of the compressor here. It just screws in or they provide some barb fittings and you can mount this remotely so it doesn't have direct contact with water. Since this compressor is kinda, it's kinda low, I'll go ahead and just mount this remotely, which I, I found a little spot up here. There's already a hole. So I can just put that there, screw this in here and then hook up this line. Now the compressor and the tank are mounted. I'm gonna put this control box right here on the other side. So everything's just kind of housed together in the same area. So you can mount this box in any orientation other than with the airlift logo upside down. So that's super handy when you're trying to lay out your system is that you don't have to really be concerned with the orientation of this box. You can mount it like this. You can mount it like this. Gotta hook the air tank up to the control box over here. This is just the, uh, the air filter. And this will be the last link, the last uh, fitting we install in the tank. Let's hook these up. It's fully seated. Okay. Started to get these airlines plumbed up. So we got side one and side two. Side one is going to be your driver's side. Side two is passenger side. And we have these three-way fittings here. So... I've already gotten the lines run to the bags. And then I'm gonna install two lines that have Schrader valves on them so we can manually fill the bags if we ever have a compressor failure. And those will just simply plumb in line and I'm gonna put them over at the fuel door. So let's go look at that. There's a, a lot of space right there and on the other side of this is nothing. So just drill a couple of little holes, run those Schrader valves through there and then run those air lines down to the T fittings. Got both Schrader valves installed. There we go, we got both the lines run. It's for your passenger side, for your driver's side. Ran them all the way up there. Made sure they weren't chafing on anything. So we should have a functioning air ride system. So let's, uh, let's put some air in this thing. There's a leak on the driver's side. Mm. See if we can find that leak on the driver's side. Yep, that's good, that's good. You don't want to put a lot of air in there, just a little bit? Yeah, you don't really want to put it in the red. Here, can you hold this? Don't squeeze it yet. Here, like kind of use this hand to pick up on that. Push up and pick up on it. And when I tell you, I just give it a little bit of air, okay? Okay. All right. Pushing. And then just give it some air. Like that? Yeah, do it again. That's good. Can you take it out? Got it. Daddy? Yeah. I'm making it in Just uh, so I put on helper bags. Well, thanks to my helper, we got the air leak fixed. It was just one of the uh, hoses wasn't fully secured into a fitting. And uh, so far it's holding air. So I'm gonna throw these wheels back on because I've pretty much hit a stopping point for now. I gotta wait for that new wire to come in with the bus bar so I can do the wiring, but we have a functioning air ride system in the truck right now. Hell yeah. My goodness, it is hot outside. We're in the middle of a heat wave down here in Florida and I've uh, been trying to work on getting this wire harness done. 
Uh, haven't been able to record much of me actually doing it, but let's review what the directions say. And I'm gonna show you guys what I got going on under the truck. The harness is pretty straightforward. You got battery connection, you got a wire in and inline fuse that's provided. Then you have your ignition 12 volt, which you also wire in a fuse, which is provided. Then you have the wiring for the compressor, and then you have the wiring for the valve body. And there's just a couple of connections here with a pigtail. Since I ran this kit all the way at the back of the truck, the positive and negative battery leads would not reach. So I, I brought them back here. So this is the positive cable coming in and here's our bus bar. So now I have the main power to the harness right here with that fusible link that I wired in. Now we got the air compressor hooked up and I put quick connects on here if I ever have to drop the trailer hitch and running over here, install the relay. Here is the inline fuse for the 12 volt ignition source. And coming over here, let me grab this light. Following the harness down, we have the wiring that goes to the pressure switch and solenoid valve. Then we have the 12 volt ignition source that's going to the cab. And I'm also wiring in a trailer brake controller. That's what this wire is for. And coming down, we have the pigtail connector for the valve body. I have not put power to this yet, so uh, curious to see what happens here. Nothing yet. Of course it does, key does have to be on, so I'll tighten this up and hop in the cab. All right, I'm really hoping that that compressor just kicks on and fills up. Oh yeah, there it goes. So right now it's just gonna fill the tank. I got uh, too excited. I forgot to hook up the fitting, this little guy, at the back of the tank, which is for the, uh, the airline here. Uh, so let me go find a spot to put that. Just installed this, uh... oh, I broke it too. Just installed this seven pin uh, connector here. And I put the Schrader valve up top. So it should be like easily accessible, making sure, making sure it works. Oh yeah. Yep, easily accessible. You see back here, that's the airline just going to the back of the tank. Let's try this again. All right, that's good. Check the leaks. All right, now it sounds like it's pressurizing. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so to enter pairing mode, I guess once you remove the main fuse and put it back in, it, it'll enter pairing mode for five minutes. So it says the remote should automatically go into pairing mode. So we'll give this a second and see what happens. Well, I thought I was recording that, but I missed it. Uh, this pretty much automatically paired with the unit. All you have to do is disconnect the main fuse, reconnect it, and then it goes into pairing mode. You open up the remote and then it'll automatically look like uh, like this screen right here. And then you just select the unit that it displays and click connect. So, okay, so let's see what happens here. There it goes. Put it right at 10. Put it up to 20. Yep. And if we drop her down to five. That's cool, you could watch the uh, the live PSI on the screen. That's really handy. I'm gonna go see if I can install this app. All right, so I downloaded the app, but we haven't paired it yet with the system. So I just put it in pairing mode. Oh, let me turn my Bluetooth on. There it is, tap to connect. Pair. Oh, okay. So 
So it's, this one has a live readout up top and the uh, actual readout on the bottom. That's really cool. That was very easy to connect to the remote and to the app. One of the tests I'd like to do is in the truck since it's so far in the back, I'm worried about connectivity issues. So let's say I'm driving down the road and I wanna stiffen up the suspension a little bit. We turn on our controller. It's connecting. Looks like it's connected. Yeah, it just kicked on. Very cool. That's a great sign. Oh, there's a little red dot up here. What does that mean? Maybe a bad connection? Yeah, that's what that is. That's the, uh, that's the signal to the, the unit. So it's not a great signal, but it still works. So another thing I want to check is I want to make sure the left and right side bags are operating properly. So if we go to this side and let's say, uh, let's add some air. Let's look at our wheel well. Okay, so that went up a little bit. Adjusting the pressure. And then if we go, well, that's both of them down. Let's uh, go back over and just go all the way down to five. Not much movement, but I think that was the right side. Let's, on, hang on now. Let's go over, let's put this up to 20. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's working. So that's pretty cool. You can uh, adjust the different sides of the system to have different PSI. You know, if you're heavy, if you're loaded heavy on one side, you could level the load out, which is actually pretty nice. The last thing I wanna test out is this air hose. I wanna make sure that uh, this works and it's functioning and see what kind of air pressure this thing puts out. All right. Let's grab like a sander or something. <laughs> it's definitely not enough air to run this tool, but this is perfect for filling up tires. Well, now I'm one step closer to towing with this truck, and I gotta say, Airlift Company knocked it out of the freaking park with this kit. This wireless air kit can be plug and play with basically any helper bag setup that you have, or you can grab it just to have onboard air. They also have helper bags for all kinds of applications. So check out airliftcompany.com to see what they have for your project. That's going to do it for me on this one. I really appreciate you hanging around. I'll see you in the next video. Ah, oh, it's hot. I got to go inside.